So hello fellow banknote and coin collectors. So today I'm just going to show you some of my Australian banknotes. And well most of them will be the paper type but some of them will be polymer. So let's get into it. So my name is Glenn and I don't think I've actually shown the whole series of paper banknotes before. I'm not too sure. I know I've done denominations but But not normal banknotes. But if you collect this stuff, I recommend that you get one of these books. Renix Catalog Values. There are other catalogs. I think there's another one. Uh, Mackie's or something. I'm not too sure. But I've only got the Renix one. Um, this is the latest edition. 27th, I believe. 28th should be coming out in a year or two. Uh, because, well, this is good. It gives you information. I have done another video. It gives you information. Like this one has the... Oh, let's see if we can fix this up a bit more. So this one has the bullion. The act. Bullion act. So pre-federation. It has the... What are these called again? Proclamation coins. So these are foreign coins. that are proclaimed to be legal tender in Australia. And it gives some history gives the actual act there and it gives the values um, they've actually taken out tokens they're given our uh, coins uh, all commemorative coins uh, banknotes so these are the state issues then you have the overprinted version so these are Australia's first banknotes these are very hard to get have a look very expensive as well and then you have the pre-decimal issue and you have the decimal issue so yeah it is good to actually get this book so if you have these type of banknotes like these are, are pretty circulated so these do not actually increase in value that much so here we have a Phillips Wheeler so this is uh, 1972, and the Phillips Wheeler type has both Commonwealth of Australia and Australia. So they changed this in, ooh, what date? Uh, 1974. Obviously, it was um, put into regulations beforehand, and they also changed it then here. So it says Commonwealth of Australia. Here it just says Australia. And this one is a center thread. And as you can see, the center thread is too close to where people folded the banknote, so you could actually tear a lot easier. And I've seen s some countries put the thread right in the center. It's a really bad thing. Uh, so this one's 1972. Uh, this one probably has a value of, um, I don't know. It has a book value of $50, but you can probably buy it for, I don't know, $40. Depending on what everyone wants to buy and sell it. Uh, here we have Fraser and Cole. So this is a 1991. These ones, mm, considering they're 27 years old, they're still only worth about $30, $40. So... They've probably just kept up with inflation, but over the long term, like a 1966 banknote like this, in this condition, yeah, it's only worth about $30, $40. And with inflation, it should actually be worth $200. And this banknote here, with inflation, should have a value of $200. Sorry, the 1966 should have a value over $200. This one's about $200. But if you sell it for $40, it's really not worth keeping banknotes in this condition. So, if you've got a banknote in this condition, a current banknote, then uh, just spend it. It's not worth keeping unless it has a special, like the first or last serial number, or has good numbers. Uh, does this have good numbers? Oh, yeah, 13731. That's okay. It's like a ladder or something. 
Oh no, not a ladder. A radar. Yeah, because it goes forward and back, forward and back. And they're the twenty dollar notes. So replaced in nineteen ninety four by the current ones, which are going to be replaced probably next year. So I have. Oh, wait. So I have banknotes. And don't worry about that. Anyway, so I've um, just moved these out of the way. It gives the value, and I don't really want to show most people. Ah, uh, $1 coins. So uh, $1 banknotes. These ones are 9 79 This one's a, a lot of 10 single. Not bad. And here is the last $1 banknote was issued 1982. And it was used until 1984. Then we have $2 banknotes, 1985 series with uh, Johnson Fraser. Then we have my favourite banknote, the $5 banknote. I actually remember using this. It's an awesome banknote to actually use. Big paper one. Johnson Fraser, so 1985 again. And here we have two Johnson Fraser. So we have one with the Gothic and one with the ooh, OCD, I believe it's called. Um, OCRB, that's it. I can't remember. It's really not important to remember all that crap. Uh, just as long as you know the differences are. And with the $5 note, uh, which ones? You can get these two versions. And uh, this one is actually worth a bit more than that one. But they're all uncirculated. And here are Johnson Fraser again. And if we go to the other side, we have 1979. As you can see, I wonder if you can see there, you can see there's a colour difference. The actual white line is more prominent in the earlier banknotes than in the later one. So Johnson Fraser 981, 1991. And I actually like this banknote better because I don't know the difference in the colour is just awesome. So it's Joseph Banks and there's a botanist and these are all the flowers. And I remember going to the note printing branch in um I can't remember when, when I was a kid. And I actually had all the plants there that were actually featured on this banknote. And they're all native. They're all bank shears. So it looks like a she-oak. Uh, uh, grass tree. Uh, Grevillea. Uh, eucalyptus. And is there any wattles? No, I don't see any wattles there. Oh, well. Awesome Australian banknotes. And here we have the $10. Oh, sorry. This one was replaced in 92 for polymer. Here's $10 replaced in 93. So we have a Fraser Cole. And that is uh, 1991. A Fraser Cole as well. This one's a... These are two, two sets. This has good number series. Uh, oh, Fraser Higgins. So 1990. So 1990, 91. And there's actually quite a lot printed, so just because it was issued for one year doesn't mean it's actually rare. It's actually quite a common banknote. They just would have printed a lot of banknotes. And then when a Fraser Cole, um, Cole took over, uh, they just would have started printing his banknotes and issued him when, as needed. Ooh. Should have left that there. Anyway, that's just an estimated value. That's a book value. It's not the actual value of the banknote. But this is Gothic. And it has a side thread, 1979. Uh, I don't know why it's got side thread on it. Okay, so here we have later banknotes. Here we have a... a Philip Wheeler. I believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Philip Wheeler. And... That is the Night Wheeler banknote. So here's a Philip Wheeler. 
So, as you can see, Phillips. It's just sometimes they get confused with that banknote signature. Uh, Johnson Fraser, 1985. 1976, this is one's pretty good condition banknote for its age. And I actually like the $20 banknote. As to Charles Kingston Smith, I just made a video because I had a coin in 1997 to commemorate 100 years of his birth. And it actually part, uh, disappeared somewhere around Burma. And here we have uh, Farrah. Obviously, he was a pioneer in aviation. Or maybe physics. Uh, lots of aircraft. Can't remember. Can't remember everyone. And we have the $50 banknote. So here is the 1990. Said there. And these were uncirculated condition. 1979. So the $50 banknote is issued in 1973. So this was the 1979 version. Pretty hard to get in uncirculated, but not too hard. Because, well, 1979, $50 is worth a lot of money. And as you can see, both of these, the white lines are actually more prominent on them than on the later versions. But I actually quite like this part, the 50. And this is Gothic, and it was OCRB. And doo -doo -doo. Well, that's just a mid prefix, so it's just a whatever value mid prefix is. And here we have $9.79, one and two dollar. I'll sell as a set. Yes, all these banknotes have to go. I'm not in that much hurry for money, so. Oh, this is money. So. Here I have the golden trove of my collection. And why do I have these? Well, the $50 because it's WCC. For some reason, it's not the last prefix, but for some reason it's just valued more. ADK. ADK is the last prefix of the $20 ever issued. So 1993, 1994, that would have been exchange for the polymer, so this is probably printed 993, ADK is the last prefix. And we don't know, I don't know what number was the last banknote, but this one is worth more than normal prefix. And what's the go with this $10 banknote? Done. Hmm, what's the go with this one? Well, that's the same with the $20. MRR is the last prefix ever issued for this banknote. So, this one, this one also comes either with or without a plate letter. And the ones without a plate letter are worth a lot more than the ones with a plate letter. Does this one have a plate letter? It looks like it does. So, last banknote, last banknote, special not, uh, letters. Awesome. So, I hope you like Australian banknotes. They're awesome. You're good to collect in uncirculated condition, but not in this condition. So I hope you have uh, an awesome banknote collecting time, people. And uh, be cool. Bye-bye.